So did you know you were going to attack him as soon as he came in the trailer? That's what I thought was that I would I would hit him and then take his car and leave. And so he was facing you when you hit him with a hammer, correct? He kind of charged toward me, and um, then I saw the knife on the ground, and I grabbed it really quick, and, and he was like tackling me, and and I pulled out the knife as quick as I could out of the case and everything, and started stabbing him. This video contains the interview of a man who confessed to being the murderer in a 20-year-old cold case. In 1994, Brandon Wright was going through a rough patch in life. He was at that awkward point between high school and college, with no career path in sight and no idea what he wanted to do with his life. Instead, Wright turned to drugs. He spent most of his time using and didn't care who he ended up hurting in the process. Wright never intended for Robert Bushy to die. In fact, the two men did not know each other at all. Wright just happened to be in the area where Bushy was living in his trailer, and if Bushy hadn't come home so soon after Wright broke in, he would still be alive. On the night of the murder, Wright was high on heroin, which he later claimed affected his actions. When he heard Bushy returning to his trailer, he knew he would be caught, and he wasn't going down without a fight. The two men struggled, and Wright stabbed Bushy wherever he had the chance. The wounds would later be found to reach a shocking total of 50. Once Bushy was dead, Wright covered the body, stole Bushy's car, and escaped. A small accident not long after had him abandoning the car, and he was never connected with the theft or the murder. <laughs> Give you some, sorry. Give you some a drink. Do you guys mind if you guys yeah. do or what? No, it's great. Yeah. 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 I apologize for being dick. You, you, I tell you what, you were not, you, you weren't being a dick, okay? It's, I completely understand your position. So thank you for giving us this opportunity to at least talk to you for a little bit, okay? Um, and if you want to stop talking, of course, that's your right, and we're not going to force you to continue talking to us, okay? But I do appreciate that it's very gentlemanlike of you to, to come over here and at least give us an opportunity to, to ask a few questions, okay? So as soon as he... This is uh, my Captain Dark Kirk. Hi there. How you doing, Dark Kirk? Okay. I'm, I'm Rich Fletcher. I don't know if I gave you my name. I told you where I was from over at the jail, but I didn't tell you my name. Dark so. Kirk Fletcher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. You guys good? Thank you. Thank you. Let me help you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, um, as we briefly discussed over at the jail, um, um, I did I did listen to an interview yesterday um, that you had with uh, Detective Wilson a couple days ago, and. Um, and I do appreciate your willingness to come in and talk about what what happened because it really not only helps the family, but it, it seems like it's helped you quite a bit to get it up your chest. So that's 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 an advantage for both of us, I think. Um, the reason we wanted to come down and talk to you though is because after we listened to the interview, there's just some things that weren't addressed, and it's not um, it's not because um, they didn't want to talk to you about it, it's because they didn't know the, the whole case because you came in and basically gave them the information about what had happened and they they didn't know any history of it. So, um, because we're from Kelso where it occurred, uh, we have um, a lot more information about the incident itself that, that was never addressed the other night. So that's that's why we came down and wanted to talk to you. Right. Okay. Um, during the interview though, um, you gave them a, a handwritten note that you intended to send to us. Yeah. Does that look familiar to you? Yeah. Is that the note that you wrote? Yes. So you drafted that in your own handwriting? Yeah. Okay, and it was intended for us to have? The family, yeah. Oh, for the, the family? You guys, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I just wanted to, I wanted to confirm that, that, that you handwrote that and signed your name to it. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like you wrote that on the 17th. Is that right? Yeah, 10, sure. 10, 12 days ago? It should have a date. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if it's okay with you, um, I kind of like to just start by just kind of recapping what you what you talked about the other day. Is that okay? Um, and, and, the, and the only reason I want to do that is just because I want to make sure I want I want to be clear mm -hmm. since I'm talking to you here in person mm -hmm. um, that that's you know what you intended to to okay. talk about. Is that is that okay with you? Sure. Okay. Sure. So um, during the interview, you you discussed uh, leaving Utah. Um, and flying over to Portland. 
That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> and it was um, towards middle of August that you flew there? Yes, it was. Okay. It was What's that? Miranda. No. Um, you haven't read your rights, correct? Uh, Do you remember your rights? I have the right to remain silent. I have the right to be represented by an attorney. I can't afford one that will be appointed for me. Let me go through the whole thing again, okay? I know, I know you read your rights the other day, and I know you remember, <coughs> I know you remember your rights, correct? Okay, I'm going to bring it to you again, right. just for clarification, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney and have a president of the you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, won't be appointed to represent you without costing before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise your rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. And if you wish to answer questions now without an attorney present, you have the right to stop answering those questions at any time. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I told you before. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so again, this is your handwritten note, correct? It is. Okay. Um, so, back in August of 1994, you flew over to Portland. Do you remember where, what, what airline you flew? I don't. Okay. Do you, have you had you flown much at that point in time? No. In your life? I had never flown in my life, except for, yeah, I don't think I had flown in my life at that point. Were you working here? I was. Okay. Where were you working? At Horseshoe Express Trucking Company. As with any confession, the detectives will have to confirm a lot of background questions to ensure that it is valid. This can take longer in cold cases when it may be harder to track people down for verification. Were you a truck driver or? No, I was uh, washing diesels. Okay. So were you laid off then or were you still employed when you left here? I don't know, to be honest. Actually, that might have not have been the time that I was employed there because I was in Orange Street like a few different times. So I might not have been employed there at that time, but I believe I was. It's, been, it's a long time ago. Yeah, I, know, I understand. <clears throat> and you flew out to Portland with who? A guy named Scott Gray. And who, who's Scott? He was one of my friends. Is he still around? I'm not sure. Is, is did he live here with you in, in Utah? Yeah, he was in Orange Street halfway house with me. Okay. Do you know how old he is? He's probably three years older than me, maybe two years older than me, so he'd be like 46 or 47 now. Okay. Do you have any family around here? or did you, you, I assumed you talked to him quite a bit since he was your buddy. I don't know. I know he had an uncle that lived here, and that's all I know. What was it? Do you know his name? I don't. Okay. You so Scott Gray or Great? Great. G-R-A-T-E. Okay. Um, so what made you guys decide to go to Portland? Uh, we had a friend, Randy Davis, that had a cousin that lived in Kelso that said that we could stay up there with them. And was Randy from here also? I think he's originally from Washington. Oh, okay. So is, do you know if he's still up there? Or? I don't know. I haven't seen him for probably maybe 12 years. Okay. I saw him briefly. Briefly once, maybe 12 or 14 years ago. Where at? Uh, was in um, the Utah State Prison. Just barely Passing Wright had been in and out of prison multiple times, most notably for aggravated assault. I recently released another highly intense video on my Patreon, an explosive altercation between two cops, where tension escalated so quickly, resulting in a drawn gun and a devastating gunshot. In a mere 26 seconds, witness the events unfold as two officers engage in a fight that turns deadly. Watch this video and more at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus by the window it would have been more like maybe 15 years ago thing and he told you that he had some cousins up in Cal in Kelso or Washington that you could stay with so did you say like you wanted to go up there and, and like hang out or I mean how how that arrangement come about where we didn't have a place to stay like we were gonna Oh, we had a, we got dirty urines at stupid, at like a, something not petty, so you, like a dirty urine at the halfway house. Mm -hmm. And so we were going to run away or whatever. 
and so we absconded from the halfway house and he said that he had a, his cousin would let us stay there. Okay. So how did you um, how did you get your plane ticket? Did you guys have money or did someone buy it for bit, you? Yeah, we had a little bit of money. Like I got my last check and Scott got his last check. Okay. So you got into Portland mid August. Mm -hmm. And who picked you up from Portland? It was uh, uh, Randy's cousin and, and her husband, or her, I don't know if they were married, either her husband or her boyfriend. And you said it was Cal and Sue. Cal and Sue. Mm -hmm. Do you know what their name, last names are? I don't know. Okay. What did they pick you up in? Do you remember that? I don't remember a specific car, but it was. Uh, it was like a, it was an older, like one of them uh, boat cars, kind of not a boat car, but you know what I mean. Uh, I don't know. It's like a big sedan, big four door car. Yeah. So, um, so they picked you up, and I assume drove you up to Kelso. Yeah. Do you know where they live? Like Longview, count out in the county, or in Kelso somewhere? I don't. Not sure. Right. Don't remember. I don't remember. Um, so you stayed with them for a little bit. How long did you stay with them? Probably maybe seven or ten days, maybe. Or somewhere between maybe seven and ten days. Okay. So how long did you intend to stay with them? I don't know. Indefinitely, or I don't know. You are just going to obtain residency up there and just stay there? More or less, but then, uh, I don't know. I don't seem to like get along well with people, apparently, for very long periods of time, so I was just going to come back home. And they dropped me off by a place where the train comes by. And I was going to try to jump on the train, but it went by too fast every time. There's no way I could have jumped on that train. <laughs> okay. So, um, did, you, did you have like a, uh, a disagreement with them or something? Or why did you leave their house and, and go, go down and, and, and stay in the shop? It was by a, the shed. It was a missing. It wasn't a misagreement, it was me, like I have a difficult time getting along with people and so I told them I had to leave and they were like fine with that and they, they yeah, so it was like a mutual thing. So you just left on foot then? They dropped me off by the train, by where the train goes by the river, by the river. Okay. Did you have a, were you on foot or did you have a bicycle or? On foot. Did, did you ever have a bicycle? Did you ever find a bicycle? And any other transportation other than by foot? No, not until I stole Mr. Bushy's car. Okay. So they dropped you off at the train depot, and um, you obviously walked from there. How far do you think you walked? Did you walk around for a couple of days, or or yeah. was it the same day that you found the I shop? I think it was like two days. Okay. Where did you stay for those two days? In the bushes by the river. Okay. So um, when you left the river then to go and you ultimately ended up at Bob's property, how, what, what, what took you there? Yeah. I, got, I was smoking cocaine with this guy and I got all paranoid that he was going to beat me up. Even during a murder confession, most suspects are reluctant to admit to drug use. Wright does so without needing to be prompted. Do you remember who that was? I don't. Okay, just a no. guy on the river? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you left him then, and then just happened upon this property? I was running running through bushes. I don't know. I thought like all of a sudden him and a bunch of people were chasing me. I was, like, I was really, really like, paranoid that they were going to attack me or something. Mm -hmm. So I was just running through all these bushes. And then I stopped some where to listen, and I laid there for a long time. Seems like it would not have been like overnight, all the way overnight. But I, then I got up and started walking again. And that's when I encountered at that that um, shop. 
So you talked about uh, a big shop, a big shed-like shop, mm -hmm. and then you, you had talked about a house and a travel trailer mm -hmm. and a big box van truck mm -hmm. kind of a thing, and then a red car. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had mentioned, I think during the interview, that, that you had entered a shop, the shop, the big metal shop first. It was a wood, wood shop. Like, I think it was made out of wood. Could it have been metal, or you just don't remember? It, maybe it could have been, but I don't think it was. So, um, it was a pretty good size, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty big shop, okay. Um, and what did you do inside the shop there? I was walked around looking at stuff, and then I was going to steal some stuff out of there. So I stopped, I put it by a door, by a sliding door. Uh -huh. And then, um... And that's it, and that's all well, I did in there. So if I showed you a quick cl clarifying question, how did you get into the shop? I think through the side, through a side, like there was a, a door that you could, you could slide out a little bit or something. Was, think, that, was I, that unlocked? I think that was, I honestly don't remember, I don't think it was unlocked. So if I showed you a picture of the shop, do you think you would recognize it? More than likely, I would imagine that would. Did, was there any um, was there any refrigeration in there? Any Not that I know fridge of. freezer or anything like that? Not that I know okay. of. But you said there was some other property in there. What kind of property? Like all kinds of camping equipment and shop equipment and like tools and things like that. Is that where you got his his tools that you ended up taking eventually? Okay. So the welder and the Animal and skilled side, it's called power saws or something. And the what? Power saws or skill saws or something that you see you took a couple of those too. It seems like I took some other power tools, but I don't remember what they were. But that's where they came from, was the shop. Okay. Um, and you stayed there for? I don't know, maybe two or three days. Okay. At what point did you finally des decide to go over? I mean, if you were in that shop, you kind of knew that someone would stay in that travel trailer then. Because it was close by, it was only 30, 40 yards away maybe. Is that about right? So you knew someone was coming and going from the travel trailer. I didn't know that they were living in there at the time. But then I came under the impression that somebody was because it was like like somebody was living in there mm -hmm. like currently. So. Okay. So, uh, what, at what point did you decide to go over to the trailer? Um, during one of the days when I was getting real hungry, I thought there might be some food in there. Okay. So, you decided to go in there and look? Mm -hmm. Okay. You had mentioned before that you broke a window out to get into the trailer. That's correct. Okay. Did you, how did you break out the window? I don't remember. I don't remember, like, if I put something on it and hit it, or I don't remember, to be honest. I don't remember. There was a... Wright was under the influence at the time, and 20 years have passed. Even if he is telling the truth, some of the details might be difficult or impossible to recall. Before we move forward, I want to extend my thanks for watching. This video today has no sponsor, so if you're enjoying it, subscribing helps the channel grow. You can also check out my second channel, Stranger Crimes, after this video. Like a welder's cap, mm -hmm. a welder's like a head protector in the hole, in the stuffed in the hole. Do you remember anything like that? Could you have used something like that to cover your hand with? Easily, but yeah. Okay. But you're not sure. If I showed you a picture, it might, it might recall memory. I remember seeing like some welder caps, but I don't remember how I broke the window, regardless of whether there was something in the window or not. I don't remember. Just Did you ever cut your hand when you broke the window? Do you remember cutting your hand? I don't think so. I think I broke my. I think I cut my hand during the struggle with the knife. Okay. Right there. You still have a scar of that? Yeah. Oh. Can I take a picture of that? Yeah. On your thumb, or yeah. is that what you just showed me? marker there. You think that was caused by the, the knife closing on my hand. 
Oh, during the incident itself? Yeah. How bad did it bleed? I don't remember. So, uh, you broke the window out of the door, opened up the door, and, and went in the trailer. Was anyone inside the trailer? No. You remember the inside of the trailer? I don't, not any more than it just being a standard trailer, like thousands of trailers, or, you know, I've been in countless trailers. Do you remember if it was, like, really well capped, or if it was kind of disorganized, or... Kind of moderate, like, not over, like, not over clean or not over dirty, just kind of lived in, not, like, real clean or not real dirty. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a picture of the, the, what I think is the shop that you were in. All right. Um, and just tell me if you recognize it, okay? All right. That easily could have been it, yeah. Okay, that's I metal. That. That's made out of metal, so. Uh, but that's a big shop that was on the property where the trailer was. So, mm -hmm. more likely than not, that, that was the shop that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, you said it wasn't real clean, but... But it wasn't dirty either. It was okay. Dirty. So uh, you got into the trailer, and um, was there anything in the trailer that you were going to take, or just, or were you just looking for food? At first, I was just looking for food, and and then I thought there might be a gun in there or something. I've been like into guns when I was younger. So. Mm -hmm. So what did you have to eat in the trailer? A bunch of boxes of granola bars. Okay. Did you make any food? Mm -hmm. Just ate ready to eat food. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Not that I remember. I think that was it. Okay. And I think you told Detective Wilson that you were in there for like hours. Probably a long time. So what were you doing in the trailer for so long? Were you sleeping or just hanging out looking at stuff? or Because that's quite a long period of time to be quite honest with you. It is. Yeah. It's hard to remember. Yeah. It just seems like I was in there for a long time. Okay. Were you high then? I'm sure I was, but not, not like, just maybe in a residual way from lack of sleep, like rim depression, I was probably up, I don't know, I don't know. Um, from the time that I left Portland, I mean, I left Salt Lake, I probably slept two partial nights in like 20 day period or something. Mm -hmm even though I didn't continue using drugs after I left Sue and Calvin. I was probably just, you know, still kind of gone mentally because of the brown deprivation. I would imagine that had an impact, not that it's an excuse or anything, but that's just a, like a legitimate thing like you could take into consideration. The detectives don't understand why he spent so much time in that building, but Wright is honest about his mental state at the time and how it might have influenced his actions. In considering my frame of mind at the time, mm -hmm. not that it takes away from the responsibility, but absolutely that would have an impact on, you know, everything whatever yeah. that would happen. So I assume you didn't have any spare clothes because you left Calvin and Sue's place. Did you take any clothes? Did you find any clothes to take with you? I don't know. If, I don't think I did. Okay. Um, Unless I took some clothes from... That I had that I brought from Salt Lake, maybe. How about any gloves? Um, I don't remember having any gloves at all. Okay. Where did you find the hammer? I think it was just in. Uh, I think it was inside of the trailer somewhere. It was just laying there. Or, I think so. So it was kind of an impulsive. Yeah. You said that you saw uh, Bob come home. Yeah. So and, uh, the just, first thing that I. Because, no. okay, because you kind of knew that he was going to find you in there. Yeah, no, yeah. So when you, well, I mean, what was your frame of mind then? You just like, didn't want to get caught? You, yeah. So did you know you were going to attack him as soon as he came in the trailer? That's what I thought was that I would, I would hit him and then take his car and leave. Okay. I didn't think that he would be able to, like, uh, he didn't even, it didn't even seem to phase him. The hammer didn't even phase him. Okay. Um, I think you told me you hit I think you told Detective Wilson that you hit Bob in the head. 
Yeah. Was he, so he was facing you when you hit him with the hammer, correct? Yeah. So do you do you know for sure where you hit him? In the head. Okay, because there's a really big gash on on his eye, on just beneath his eye. Could you have hit him there with the hammer? Maybe. Okay. So you said when you hit him with the hammer, it didn't, didn't phase him at all. Didn't probably it probably just made him mad. Probably. So what happened right after you hit him with the hammer? He kind of charged toward me, and um, then I saw the knife on the ground. And I grabbed it really quick, and, and he was like tackling me. And and I pulled out the knife as quick as I could out of the case and everything, and started stabbing him. So you said it was a Leatherman tool. Yeah. So are you sure of that, or you just think that's what it was? It was either a Leatherman or a Gerber multi-purpose tool. It was definitely a multi-purpose tool. It, it wasn't a folding knife. No. But it was in a case. Yeah. So you actually had to take the keys open, remove the device, and then open it up. Yeah. So a Leatherman tool is Leatherman tool is you have to open it up and then take a blade out of the yeah. handle itself. So you had to manipulate yep. quite a bit. Do you remember doing that? I do. Okay. Like so just briefly, it was like getting tackled and like just super fast. I don't know. It's like who couldn't even imagine it, but that's exactly what happened. Okay. Was he hitting you? No, he was like tackling me. Like with his arms, so there were no blows being thrown. It was like just coming at me, and then I got, I actually was able to reach down while he's like pushing at me. I opened it up, believe it or not. I opened the whole thing up and started stabbing him. And that's exactly, so was he, exactly what happened. Was it like a bear hug? That yeah. He, okay, so of. he had you wrapped up kind of in his arms then? Kind of. Not all the way though. Like he started pushing towards me, and then. But you were able to open it up? It was. And you had mentioned that you stabbed him a bunch of times in the stomach. Was that because you couldn't get higher? The attack wasn't planned. And during the fight, Wright stabbed Bushy wherever he could. There were probably many that he wasn't sure would connect or do any damage. And this usually results in a higher number of wounds than an attack that the victim doesn't see coming. Because he had you in a bear hug, or do you remember? Because there was a lot of stab wounds in his stomach. Probably and because I was like... Down, like I, when I went down mm -hmm. to pick it up, he's a big guy, mm -hmm. and um, and I just started stabbing the first place that I could see, and he and he kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. It didn't like seem to like it wasn't doing much to him. It, I mean, it, obviously it was killing him, but he was a strong man. So yeah. At what point did he fall down, or did you push him down? I don't really don't know. I don't know. Well, at some point you must have been on top of him. Maybe at the end. No, I don't know. I don't think. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. To, and then I covered him with some blankets and stuff. And you like mentioned. At one point, he stopped pushing towards me, and then I stabbed him maybe five more times, and he said, "You're killing me." Was he still standing there? Yeah, and then he was, was falling. And it's hard to remember, like, it's hard to remember, like, the exact details, but I, it's just like... How long did he live, then, after you stopped stabbing him? I don't know, maybe... Maybe five minutes or so, maybe. Quite a while then. Yeah. Because, because five minutes is quite a while if you're yeah. watching something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Was he talking? The reason I think that's because that's when I, I think that I started smelling like feces in urine. Oh, okay. Wright has a rough idea of how long Bushy survived after the attack and informs the detective that he believes it was about the time he noticed that Bushy's body had voided itself. So I think that, that, that he was deceased at that point, but he may have died before that. Okay. Did he say anything after he fell down? No. So he only just said, you're killing me when you were yeah. fighting with him? Yeah. Is that the only thing he said? Yeah. Never say anything else? No. So after you, after you thought he was dead and you smelled, smelled urine Sorry. and feces, yeah. Um, you stuck around for a while. 
I did. Okay. Why did you stick around? Oh, I let up in panic. I didn't, I don't even know what, yeah, what was going through my mind. I can try to think of it, I'm not, I don't even know. I was scared. I, obviously, I was really scared. I, I, I think... Did they hear like horn, like a horn blast in the house that night? Do you know? Who? The people that were living in the house. Um, uh, why do you ask that? I'm just wondering. I don't know. There was. Uh, I don't know. Where would the horn blast come from? Like when I was driving away, I was honk. I honked the horn in the in his car. Oh, accidentally. Yeah, I think accidentally, but maybe. So you were in his you were in his trailer for a little while after it happened. Yeah. And um, I think you said you took his wallet and his ID and um, yeah. and did you take anything else out of the trailer? Take some food with you? Probably some granola bars. Okay. Anything else? Cup, perhaps. Not that I remember. Okay. Just food. Just... Where did you find his car keys at? In his pocket. So you dug through his pockets and grabbed his wallet, grabbed his keys, take any money? There was some money in his wallet, but I don't know how much. It was like uh, maybe 30 bucks or something, 20, 30, 40 bucks. Okay. Did you take anything out of the wallet and leave it there? Like, Not that I remember. Okay. Um, so you eventually left the trailer, and uh, you must have gone back to the shop. Correct. Yeah. There was some um, barbecue sauce and pickles and mustard, I think, and a bunch of other like condiments and some um, some meat that like it had been taken out of a freezer. Mm -hmm. It was staged in the shop. <coughs> it was what? Sorry. Like it was staged. It was like set on the floor, like like it was uh, put there, intending for someone to come back and get it later or something. Do you remember that kind of stuff? Probably. Got a picture of that. Yeah, probably. That must have. I mean, assuming that must have come out of the trailer. You know. I don't think so. It, would it have come from the shop? Yeah. Where did you find that stuff in the shop? I don't remember. But I don't. I don't. I wouldn't have taken. I'm going to show you a picture of that stuff too, so it, you, it might help to recall. This was in the shop. Might have been a freezer somewhere. Do you think there was a freezer in the shop? I mean, were you intending to maybe eat that there in, while you were staying in the shop, or, or you just don't remember? I don't remember. I probably did eat some stuff in that shop or something. Okay. But I don't remember. Is it possible that you brought that stuff from the trailer and like left, left it there while you were taking things out of the shop to leave? I don't think I would have taken it yeah. from the camper to the car, to the to the camper. I mean, to the uh, shop, and then take it out of it the car make sense, and put it into the shop. Yeah. No. No. The reason behind the placement of several items can't be accounted for. Wright claims he has no memory of moving them, and it wouldn't serve any purpose for him to lie. It's likely you, you, might, you might have found this in the so in the shop. In the shop. Okay. <clears throat> so you. Uh, did you back the car over to the shop to load it up, or were you carrying everything from the shop over to the car? I think I pulled it over by the door, pulled the car over by the door. And you took some tools, a welder, Dremel yeah. tool, things like that, yeah. and put it in car. in the car or in the yeah, trunk? In the car. In the, in the oh, passenger? I'm not sure exactly where I put it. Probably. Okay. okay. And this... Both. Okay. This car that you... This Bob's car. That yeah. you took. It was a red car. Yeah. And um, you had mentioned that it was a Chevy Impala. That's my belief. Okay, that's your belief. So, um, it's my belief it was a different kind of a car, but it was red. Uh, okay. Um, and if I showed you a picture of that, you think you'd remember? Probably. Okay, there's, there's one. There's one out there. With the tire. Uh, not yet. Underbird? Yeah. It didn't it seem like it. Let me show you. I'll show you a picture of the inside. Maybe the, maybe the driver's compartment. Maybe that might spark a memory for you. 
It looks like it was a, a manual, manual transmission. This is Bob. This is Bob's car. I don't remember that, it, whether it was manual or automatic. Okay, but it was definitely a red car. Yeah. Okay. This is Bob's car that was taken from his property All when, right. when you left. And you, you had mentioned um, on your way south after you left Bob's house. Yeah. After this all had happened, um, you left Bob's property that night. Like within hours after killing him, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you remember? I know it's going to be hard for you to recall, but do you remember what time of the day this happened between you and Bob? Cause it was summertime, so it was probably light until about nine o'clock at night. Then it's hard to estimate because it was. It seems like sometime between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. So it was still light out then? A little bit, Okay. I think. And you had mentioned um, when you drove down to Portland, you, and you were headed down to Portland to, to do what? Oh, there's a couple of I was trying to go to Salt Lake. I was just trying to go you back, back home. home. Were, you, were you intending to drive the car back home? Yeah, okay. probably. Uh, but you fell asleep, hmm. and you hit a barrier or something. Yeah, those cement medians, like on um, the freeway, okay. barricade, or, you know, just those center dividers that are concrete. Do you remember where that was? If the accident had caused Wright to be caught with a stolen car that night, Bushy's murder could have potentially been solved sooner. It was, um, it had to have been in Portland. And why do you say that? Or on the outskirts, because... <laughs> Soon after I pulled over, pulled off the freeway into the park, <clears throat> and um, that turned out to be Burnside, um, Portland, or something. Okay. Yeah. The car was found with a flat tire. Mm -hmm. It was actually a, the the tire that was flat is actually the right front tire mm -hmm. that um, and it looked like it had some abrasions on it or something from, from hitting something hard, like maybe a cement barrier or something, barricade. Does that look familiar to you? That's the front right tire of the vehicle. I, I can't remember. That doesn't look that, that doesn't look really familiar. Okay. Did you ever get out and look at it or just kind of realize that there's a flat tire and that, that it was kind of out of commission at that point? Yeah, I looked at it a couple of times, but I don't remember the, the details about how it looked. Okay. Well, the story that you told the other night um, to Detective Wilson um, actually was consistent with the condition of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, being 22 years ago, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I can see why you would maybe mistake the front left tire from the front right tire. It's I think I said the front right tire. Actually, you said the front left, so that's what was kind of... That's what made me go back and look at the photos, but... I was pretty sure I said front right. Okay, well, it is the front right, yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Right. Or, oh, wait, front right, you mean on the driver's side or the passenger side? The passenger side. side. That's the passenger side tire that was, that was damaged. If so, that's weird, I don't, it didn't seem like that was the mm -hmm. one. Well, nonetheless, I mean, you, you knew there was a flat tire, that's why you pulled off the freeway, and, mm -hmm. and that's Bob's car, and that's the condition it was found in, so I mean, it, it, it's just a little hiccup. No, no, it's not that big of a deal, really, because I mean, you knew that the car was disabled. Can I ask just a clarifying question? Back to you, Sue and Calvin. Uh, Sue was your friend's cousin. Calvin was the husband or boyfriend. How old were they? I would say... I would say, oh, it's hard to, I don't know for sure, maybe in their mid-twenties. Okay, and uh, uh, to early thirties. What did they do for a living that you remember job-wise? I don't think they were employed. Okay, did they have an apartment, did they have a house? A house. A house, and did they live uh, in the city limits of, in, in, down in Kelso somewhere, or outside of Kelso, or? I'm not sure the layout there, but I know it's in like Kelso or Longview. No, right there. Okay. 
Did they have any kids? Yeah, they had um, a daughter. Do you remember her name? I don't. Yeah, okay. She's a cool kid, though. Mm. And how old was she at the time? Twelve. Twelve years old. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, um, you pull off the freeway, park somewhere to park. You were told you couldn't stay there, mm -hmm. so you drove the car over to. Did you drive or push the car? I was trying to remember. You ended up somewhere else. Yeah. There was a guy that like stopped um, with the police officer there, and said he'd give me a hand. So I think he told me to the gas station and then I went I stayed with them for like the next seven or so days. But you left Bob's car at a big in a big parking lot. The theft of the car was a frustrating point for the police during the original investigation, knowing that it was most likely the murderer who had driven it to the parking lot. Today, Wright would have easily been caught on camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's and you removed all the problem, removed all the stolen property that you took from Bob's house mm -hmm. and took it with you with the other people. Yeah. Did you, um, there was a, a blue shirt that was left there at the scene. Was that, mm -hmm. do you remember if that was your blue shirt or, or could have been Bob's or do you remember what you were wearing if you take, took any clothes off, cleaned yourself up anywhere? If I would have cleaned myself up, the, the clothes that I had on would have been bloody. Mm -hmm. So, if they weren't bloody, then I don't know if I, I would have to look at them and see if they're like the ones that I had. Or Do you remember stopping anywhere on the way to Portland, like at a rest area or anything, to clean up? or Because you had to have blood all over you. I cleaned up when I got to their, to, to those people's place. They took my the, the bloody clothes and let me take a shower. Okay. Did you tell them what you'd done? Not specifically. You said something about making up a story about something else. Okay. Yeah, that something happened to my sister and I had to, I had to take care of it. And I thought that would be explanation enough. Okay. But I mean, not that I, they didn't, you know, that. You were in Kelso for probably, what, a couple of weeks maybe? Yeah. So, what did you do for money while you were in Kelso? I didn't have a job or anything. I had a little bit of money left. Okay. All right. Sue and Cal like supported us with some food and stuff. That's your cousin, and you were staying with them. Uh, my friend, or your friend, their cousin, uh, this Randy Davis. Did you do you remember anybody in Kelso that you would have? met and remembered uh, anybody first and last name can you think of anybody you ran into that really sticks out in your mind um, other than those those folks mm -hmm. a bar uh, another house did you were you ever contacted by the police while you were in Kelso mm -hmm. no. do you remember stealing anything while you were in Kelso other than from Bob no. Damaging any property? No. Assaulting anyone else? No. Or engaged in any fights or anything? Using any what? Engaged in any fights with anybody? No. What did you do for the two weeks? Mostly got high. Okay. Do you remember who you were getting your drugs from? Really not an issue for us now, but it was, no. okay. Are you getting it from Sue and Cal? Do they offer you any? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's okay. Yeah, they're not any tr nobody's in any trouble. I just try to confirm a few things. Can you, I mean, you've had a couple of days to kind of think about this. I mean, obviously 22 years actually, but since you actually came forward and, and began talking about it, have you? did you think of anything that you didn't tell the detectives the other night that that you remember now? In other words, is there anything else that 
that you feel is important that you haven't talked about yet? No. Okay. The knife that that um, that you stabbed Bob with. Yeah. You took it with you. You said. Yeah. And you had it with you until you were arrested in uh, Portland. And you said um, they the jail had it when they took property off of you mm -hmm. at the jail and you never got it back. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they did with it? Do you know if they just destroyed it or if they asked you if they could destroy it or if they gave it to someone else or? They never said anything to me You just never it. anything about it, okay. Mm -hmm. Wright, like many people who managed to get away with murder, almost immediately went about his life as if he hadn't committed such a horrible act. The, uh, you, were, you were originally charged with uh, possession of some kind of an illicit drug in Portland when you were, when you were arrested down there mm -hmm. because you overdosed, I think, in a bar, I think you said. That's correct. So I'm just going to make an assumption here. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the prop, Bob's property that you had, you uh, traded it or sold it or whatever. The drugs that you used that you overdosed on, mm -hmm. was that purchased with? The prop, Bob's property that you sold? Because you probably didn't have any money then. Oh, the, the way that it was working is I started trading that his property for meth, and I was shooting meth to get high, and I started going out of my mind, and I started telling the people that I was with I couldn't live with what I did, and I have to kill myself, and can you give me some heroin? Because I didn't really use heroin. I used mostly cocaine, but mm -hmm. then I started doing meth when I went up there. And um, so... Um, I asked that this that lady if she could give me some heroin, and so she got me some heroin, and I went into the bar, and I was sitting there, and I ended up shooting up like 155 units of heroin. I had only maybe done heroin twice in my life or something, but so that's what happened. And you were eventually um, taken to the hospital. Yeah. Do you remember which hospital you were at? I don't. Okay. Do you remember which bar you were at? <coughs> Do you remember the name of it? Um, I don't. Was there any landmarks around or anything that we would... Um, I don't remember. That's our one, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. I just remember telling them I had to leave and that I had to die. No. And then I got the heroin from them and I left and I found the very first place that I found was a bar and I walked in there and they asked me for my ID and I gave them my orange street halfway off the ID card and bought a picture of beer, only took like a, a little drink out of it and then went into the bathroom and had this big spoon and I mixed the heroin in there and drew up one syringe full and another one that was like 65 units full and then I was sitting there like having a hard time doing it, like actually just going through with it and then I heard somebody come into the bathroom and I just like just did it. Finally, like I had probably sat there for maybe a half an hour just trying to get up the nerve to actually just push it into my veins. And then that's when I did it. Was and this guy walked in, and this, I got that one holy big one in there, and the one that had like 95 units, and then the other one I probably got about. Was, I don't know, 50 units or something, and then I was out, like just totally out cold. And the next thing I remember, I was coming to on the stretcher. And that was when, and that's what, that's all, the last thing, I'm, I mean, that's how, what happened there. So you, you went to the hospital? Yeah. And then you went from the hospital to the jail? Yeah. And they charged you with... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Do you remember what your charges were? I know one of them was possession. drug possession. Yeah. And fugitive from justice. From leaving here? Yeah. And what were you... You had this DFC warrant or something for using in that half my house? Is that what the what the charge was? Do you remember? I can't remember for sure. You had another warrant from here, though? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, then you spent almost a month, I think, in Multnomah County Jail. And then you were extradited over here directly from the jail. Does that sound right? Okay. There was a um, there was a note that you wrote that you said you wrote at Bob's house in the in the trailer. 
Yeah. And you said something about you wrote it, uh, you know, assuming that you were Bob, you wrote it that you were leaving. Pulling your... over to somebody's house. Okay. And the name of, was the name of somebody who whose address and name was inside of his, uh, uh, his trailer. Okay. And I mean, I think I know why you did that, but you put the note on there to. Just to make it look like somebody, so nobody would question, like, where you, like, why is. Why he's not answering the door? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where did you put that note at? I think on the door. Like on the outside of the door? I think. I don't remember for sure. But I, I believe so. Okay. Um, did you sign it, Bob, or did you sign it somebody else's name? I can't remember. I would imagine that I would send it, Bob. Did you say anything about a designated driver? Huh. Okay. Not that I, not that I know. I can't remember. You also said that you, while you were after, after you killed Bob, you were inside the trailer for a little while, and someone came and knocked on the door. Did you look out to see who it was? Mm -hmm. Did they say anything through the door? Like, is anything new on yelling like Bob? You in there? Or? I think okay if that's if that's how you want to be or something. I think. And I think you told Detective Wilson that sounded like someone younger. That yeah, yeah. Like a kid, maybe, or yeah. And you're and you were sure of that. Pretty sure. Do you did you see where they went after they left the trailer? No. Do you know if it might have been someone that lived at the house nearby, or? That was my assumption. Even okay. though I didn't Just know one way or the other, because I didn't see him approach. I didn't hear. hear a I didn't car see or anything. Him go. I didn't see him in any direction. Do you know if they were alone? It seemed like it. The hammer, um, after you hit Bob in the face with it, or in the head with it, did you throw it down or did it drop out of your hand or during the struggle maybe did it? I don't remember. Okay. And um, a picture of the cupboard all over the pile. Yeah, one quick question. When you broke the, broke in, did you did you do anything with the broken glass? Would you have thought to do anything with it on the way in, just so that nobody looks, would look like it's... Maybe. This is the inside of the trailer where the glass was broke. Right. And there was a, like a, well, there's cap, so... Yeah. And the only thing, the only two things, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the only two things I could think of that that might be for would be either to protect your hand while you're breaking it, if you happen to break it with your hand, or to... Just kind of plug the hole after the fact. I don't remember. No. Okay. I really don't remember. Okay. It's just kind of an, an unusual place for a for a welder's cap to be. I mean, if I mean you wouldn't if you were living in the trailer, I can't imagine you would leave a welder's cap in that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. No, so no. it almost looks like it was placed there by someone, which yeah. would likely have been you. I imagine. Okay. Yep, yeah, that would be my assumption. Okay. Do you remember where you uh, maybe tried to stop the bleeding the most on your finger when it's bleeding? Do you remember who you used a rag or a glove or a shirt or your pants or? I don't remember any of it. Not any of that, actually. I don't remember. Some of the details will forever be lost to time. Wright is willing to tell what he knows, but the detectives will just have to accept that not everything will be wrapped up neatly. Which finger you have your left? Yeah, my left thumb. Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. Did you stab mostly with your left or mostly with your right or both? I think mostly with my right. I think it might have closed on my hand when I was trying to open it. Okay. Because it was like in a struggle. Okay. Is that more um, it, and this is a pretty significant it, incident in your life, which I mean, you have some pretty clear recollection of. Um, do you remember 
before you left the trailer, do you remember like looking on the floor and before you left, what how you left the trailer? I think I was I I stuck blankets on him. And, and you did that just to just to conceal I, him? I honestly don't know. I don't just, know. Okay. I was like or were you I could think back and probably apply a number of different reasons. Some of them conscious, some of them unconscious. I mean there's a whole lot of reasons. Well maybe they just did you cover him so you didn't have to look at him dead maybe? That might have been something. Yeah. I mean I have, I have a picture of a hammer, the only hammer that was really there. You said it was a kind of a ball peen kind of a hammer, but the one that was present at the scene was a little bit different. Um, you only saw one hammer. Did you see more than one hammer in the in the trailer, or was it just the one? I don't remember okay. whether there was more than one. But That's the hammer that was there. Does that look familiar? I might have a wrong recollection of it. Okay. Well, that was that was right next to Bob when he was discovered. So, could you have put some gloves on after the fact to, to work with the, the towels or the ra the blankets or him or could you have put some gloves on that maybe were inside the trailer that you found? Maybe, but I don't remember. If, I don't remember how, how, like there being gloves. Do you remember what, uh, I know you were, said you were a smoker back then, do you remember what kind of cigarettes he used <coughs> trailer? I don't know if he smoked or not. Do you remember um, any of the manuals or anything that were laying around? I know there was a computer book. Okay. I remember a computer book and and I didn't even know that he smoked. and. And, and except I saw in the ashtray in that car, in the photo of his car, there were cigarette butts in there. Do you remember a bunch of cigarette butts in the car when you were driving it? The detectives have to know that Wright would not recall such a thing unless they are using it to test whether or not he would make something up to make his story sound authentic. That is something that a person making a false confession would do. But Wright has already given them enough information that they can tell he was involved. I don't remember one way or the other. Okay. In that respect, but you just say that because of the picture? Yeah. So I'm going to show you a picture of the trailer when when, uh, when the police finally showed up at the trailer, when the body was discovered. Um, can you tell me if this is this, if this to your, to your best recollection that this is the condition in which you left it? Why would it matter? Like if I, I, I don't know. I don't well, I'll, I'll explain why after I show you the picture. Okay, there, there's actually a reason why I'm, I'm asking this question. Okay, do you think you might recall it or not? I don't know. Because if you don't think, if, if you didn't ever, I mean, after you covered him up, you said you covered him up with a bunch of blankets, just stuff from inside the trailer that it was laying around, mm -hmm. correct? So you covered him up. Um, could you have covered up with some clothing too? Probably. Just a bunch of articles that were there at the time? Probably. Do you remember a, a like a bright, like Afghan kind of a blanket at all? There's the one that I saw in, with that other picture that's pink. Like I saw just a glimpse of one in that other picture. I wouldn't have remembered it. Uh, well, let me just show this. Let me just show this to you. Does that does that look like like perhaps the the way you left it when you left the trailer? Yeah. Probably. Okay. I think so. Right. Who else did you tell about what happened? Except for, yeah, when I was on bath salt at Lone Peak. What's Lone Peak? It's uh, one of the parts of the Utah State Prison. And who did you tell there? I think it was the FBI. 
like talking to them in my sleep, like I wasn't asleep or whatever, but investigators from somewhere, I know I had mentioned something. And like you dreamt it or something? <coughs> <coughs> no, even though I was probably somewhat hallucinating, it was still real and I'm very aware of how real it was. Was there in prison? That was in prison? Yeah. And some investigators came to your cell or to the infirmary or? I'm not quite sure where they were, but they're probably up in the rafters. Or I mean, there's probably different parts that they can go to make observations of the prison prisoners. And I mean, this will sound weird or whatever, but so I think that they're yeah, asking me different questions and I was answering in weird ways that were probably who knows what they appeared like, but... Has that ever happened to you before in the past? Where? Anywhere. Not quite like that. Maybe with the similar, like, just questions and stuff, but... It, so you're seeing it like, you, kind of like you were hallucinating now? Mm -hmm. Does that happen to you often? Or no. is that kind of the only time? No. I okay. Most of it has been drug-related. Okay. And so it's not. When you got booked into the Multnomah County Jail after you were in the hospital for the over overdosing, and you got put in with whoever you were you were bunking with, mm -hmm. uh, did you tell anybody about this incident or even allude to it a little bit? I think I told one. One. I think I might have told a couple of. I didn't say anything specific, but. Yeah, mentioned I also alluded to it. I didn't mention Kelso, I don't think. Maybe I did. It's hard to remember. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Have you ever been? I'm not sure. Have you ever been taken to the hospital, taken into custody, and taken to the hospital by the police? Um, that day, um, before they took me to Multnomah. Multnomah. I mean, at any time in your life, not not because of this issue, not because of your overdose, have you ever been contacted by the police and questioned and taken to the hospital for, like, a mental health evaluation? No. Okay. This is another question to help determine whether or not they can believe his confession. Who are you bunking with right now? Um, I don't can't even remember his name. I think his name's Jim. He introduced himself, but like today I asked him what his name was, but I can't remember now. Did you talk to him at all? Not at length. I, I've mostly slept. Okay. And he slept. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I'm just gonna tell you right now that mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna go talk to him. So, mm -hmm. did you say anything to him about why you're in there? No. Did he ask you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Do you have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be willing to answer your questions for you if you have any. You'll you'll get you'll get extradited to Washington back mm -hmm. to work to our jail, mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you want to reach out to us at any point, talk to us. Um, you just tell one of, the, one of the corrections officers there that you want to talk to the Kelso detectives. All right. We'll come, they'll get a message to us and we'll come talk to you. All right. Um, We're going to end up coming out and picking you up. Well, maybe not us, but somehow right. we'll probably the next week or two. All right. Yeah. Just depends on whether or not you fight the extradition or not, and that's mm -hmm. not anything we even care about, but mm -hmm. that's up to you. Um, can, I, can I ask, just let's, if we can go back to what made you walk in the door this weekend and, and tell somebody this and write that note, can we, can, do you mind if I ask you why you did that? Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but yeah, it's something I've been running from forever. And just, yeah, I don't know, it's nothing, it's not my doing. What do you mean by that? Yeah. I, don't, mm. I mean, 
you trying to do the right thing, or do you think like you've been forced to come in here? Trying or? to do the right thing, but having a lot of difficulty for a long time. So, yeah. Were you ever forced to come in here and talk about it? By anybody? No. So you came in here voluntarily on your own volition. Mm -hmm. Did you get any what tattoos while you were in Kelso? I didn't. didn't. We have some tattoo people up there. Had you ever been to Kelso before that two week period? Had you ever been there before? I hadn't. Have you ever been back since? I haven't. Had you ever been in the trailer before the, when you, the, the day you went in and got confronted by him? No. Um, did you know him at all before I this incident? I didn't. And the reason I ask is his driver's license says Robert Boucher. You keep referring to him as Bob. And I'm just wondering if you've just, uh, you've come to that because most Roberts go by Bob. Is that why you've done that or? No, I think that his license says Bob. Okay, and you, you said you got rid of that license. How did you get rid of that license? Inside of a window sill. Um, of a vehicle okay. that the guy was letting me stay at his, at his house. Okay. Do you remember what kind of car that was? It was a, one of those vans that um, have like a, a bed, they're like a flat nose van, like an older, kind of like they're kind of unique. Um, I don't know how to, what the terminology used to describe them is, but. Like a Volkswagen so, van? Kind of, but it, but um, like a Volkswagen van, but with a truck bed instead of a. And you don't remember their names? I don't. I don't. How old were they? They were probably. I think the guy was maybe four or five years older than me, and the woman was probably fifteen years older than, or ten years older than me, or fifteen years older than me. Do they have kids? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. Um, had you ever been in the car before the time you took it? No. Had never been in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything that happened to the license plate to the front of that car? I don't. No questions for us? No. Brent, I really appreciate you talking to us. It, it does answer a lot of questions about peripheral things that mm -hmm. that we thought were related to this that you know, may, or may, or have, may or may not have been at this point. So, But um, it is helpful, and I appreciate your right. willingness to come over here. Can we get a picture, just your face shot um, before we leave? The detectives thank Reich for coming forward. Finally, Bushy's family can start to receive closure for his death. Sure. <clears throat> and just to let you know, too, when we get back from the jail, we'll probably get up some fingerprints from me, too. All right. Just to let you know ahead of time. Detective Wilson's ready to help us out and get you back over to the jail. 
We'll be right back. The family of Robert Bushy requested Wright be given the lightest sentence possible, not wanting his children to grow up without a father. Although the court took their wishes into consideration, they could not overlook Wright's crime. Wright was sentenced to 17 years in prison. That'll do it for today. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below where you can do just that. Thank you for watching and stay safe.